Howdy, you soldiers. Happy 2023, everybody. Oh my God, we made it. As is the case of this first week of the year, everyone's like, I gotta optimize myself to be all or better, faster, stronger. In a recent video that I did last year, I went through my whole TBR pile and I got rid of some, I decided to keep some, and then there was this giant ass stack. These were the probationary books. These were the books that I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep or not. And at one point I wanted to read them. Like they were interesting enough for me to pick up, spend my Canadian dollars on, or actively say yes to receiving. The book dragon deep inside me said that I want it. Today we are going to do an extreme elimination round challenge reading vlog, I guess. So without further ado, grab a drink, grab a snack, and buckle in because I am gonna spend the rest of this lovely Sunday afternoon to just speed reading some things and we'll see what happens. One, two, three. So these are all the books that I am currently working with. I'm gonna read at least 15 to 20 pages of each one and then we'll see how I feel about it. And if I, if it doesn't grab me right away, it's banished to the value village pile and away it will go and I will never see it again. Also, yes, we're in sweatpants today because I can't be a professional hot person all the time, okay? It's exhausting. Let the reading vlog commence. First up on the chopping block is Forging Silver into Stars by Bridget Kemmerer. I always said this by Bloomsbury. I really like her... Oh my God, what is it called? <sighs> oh no, my credibility has gone out the window. Uh, it is the... Oh God, this is taking so long. Curse So Dark and Lonely series. Look, I'm on day two of a hangover, okay? Cut me some slack. The Forging Silver into Stars is the, I guess like continuation companion series of some characters that were in the Curse So Dark and Lonely. Right off the bat, I will say, we're getting extra points for like a, a character chart. Love that. Oh my God, what, what? Shit, that went from zero to a hundred real fast, and I'm only on page six. Her writing in this is very reminiscent of her Defy the Night. Get the original cool magic world of Curse So Dark and Lonely, but then we also get like the new like kind of action, more like punchy writing from Defy the Night. Love that. Also, our main character is swinging an axe around, and I do love a girl with a sword. Speaking of, I decided to bring my entire very large collection of bookmarks out just so, you know, in case I want to I wanna keep something. I need to know where I ended off on. So I think for this, we're going to use my little metal axe head bookmark. There she is, beautiful. The next book I'm gonna try 20 pages from is Valiant Ladies by Melissa Gray, which is not magical as I found out. This is just regular old historical fiction about two ladies of the Spanish aristocracy who are trying to solve a murder and sneak out at night and I don't know, go have parties and fun and whatever else you can't do as a lady. First of all, Kiki says that it's a shame, really, that I'll have to hasten this fool's shuffle off this mortal coil. Immaculate. A plus. I love if you can work the words mortal coil into literally anything. Anna is described as like sun-kissed skin, like beautiful red hair, uh, very charming freckles. And then the last line of her description is her honey brown eyes gleaming with the promise of a little good old fashioned bloodshed. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, she's different. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is this gay? This friend is looking at the other friend a little too closely for it, for me to believably believe that she is straight. I think it is also only appropriate that I use my my sword bookmark. Can you see it? Can you see it? Next up is, let's do Dauntless by Elisa A. Bonin. This is a sapphic YA Filipino fantasy with jungle beasts. So I'm on page five. This is absolutely nothing against this book, but I'm not loving the main character's vibe, which Nothing wrong with that. Um, I think this might just be a little too YA for me and my tastes now. And I am not a tent camping person. I definitely prefer indoor plumbing within my vicinity at all times. Okay, so I have officially read 21 pages of this and I don't think it's for me. Not in a bad way, I just don't think it's for me. But if you want something that's like, this vaguely reminds me of like Indiana Jones, um, but also gay, so like, 
Love that. Um, I'm going to put this in my donation pile. Now I am moving on to a mystery gothic, which is Tripping Cadia by Kit Mayquist. Like a med school dropout named Lena who gets a job with the elite family and the son is sick, but we don't know why. And then maybe it's poison. We don't know. And then also we're falling in love with the sister. Oh my God. Uh, how have I never noticed this is so beautiful? That's a trap because I'm going to want to keep it. Oh my God. This first sentence too. Damn. Okay, <clears throat> dramatic reading time. The scent of death is sweet. A cologne of something chilling and saccharine, like spoiled figs and honey and mud. I know this because all my memories of Arrow's Edge will be forever tainted with it. A miasma left to drift into the psyche late at night while I'm driving or walking or giving more than a second alone. When the frost begins to gather on windows and the sign of a new year creeps in with all its flashing glory, the scent with it unique and terrible power consumes every part of me until the very thought of each gilded room and once polished floor is stained with it as much as the wallpaper still sits forever stained with their blood. Bitch, what? <laughs> What I have read of this book is stunning. And when I'm in the mood for a gothic, I think this is going to be it. I'm going to use my Raven Boys bookmark. Uh, it says Gansey is king and then the Raven Boys symbol. I'm gonna choose this because it looks very beautiful and creepy and, and gothic-ish. So there we go. I'm gonna be keeping this one. Oh my God, it's been an hour and I've only done three books. Oh dear, this is gonna take a while. Well, no time like the present. So the next one I'm gonna pick up is The Unspoken Name by Larkwood, AK Larkwood. I'm pretty sure there's dragons in here. So that's what originally sold it. Oh, it has a map. Oh boy, oh boy. And it has a character list, Dramatis Personae, and a, and a pronunciation guide at the front of the novel. Oh my God, be still my heart. Okay, okay, A.K. Larkwood, hold, wow, all right, that, that is an opening. Oh dear. See, this probably is why she gave a pronunciation guide at the front, because how do you say that word? Scorbe? Scorbe. Sorwe. Sor, scorwe? How, I'm giving up. Sorve. Rhymes with doorway, K-S as in books, so Sorve. Ooh, okay, this is really cool fantasy. We're definitely keeping this book, but I'm still going to, oh, I've already read 20 pages. Wow, see, it just flew by. I'm gonna go with uh, my Furyborn bookmark. That's from the Claire Legrand series. Um, that's going to go right in there. Keeping. Now we're moving on to something nostalgic. This is a book from Wattpad that Wattpad sent me, and it's Relic and Ruin by Wendy McIver because this is about a war between reapers and necromancers. And I love that idea so much. They literally just pulled a fridging. They just fridged a woman to explain the necromancer Grim Reaper origin story because of unrequited love. Could you imagine that every time I had a crush on somebody who didn't like me back, I just like raised the dead. Oh, at the beginning of the chapter, it has a fear. Does it have that in every chapter? It does! Okay, that's kind of cool. I like that idea. Move you guys a little closer. Okay, you know what? I did give this book shit in the, in the intro, but this first chapter is actually pretty funny. Books from Wattpad are a little hit or miss for me because Wattpad is a platform for amateur writers. Uh, sometimes it takes a little while for authors to get their style, but this is a teen book and it gets the teen banter correct without it sounding immature. Okay, you know what? Originally, I was a bit skeptical of this. I am going to keep it for now. I, I want, I'll do like a speed run of this a little later, I think, just to check to make sure that I'm making the right choice. But I'm gonna keep this. This sounds interesting. I'm going to use this bookmark, uh, which I got from Fabled Creative. Just gonna tuck that right in there. You know what? I think I'm not even gonna bother reading more of this one. So The River Has Teeth by Erica Waters. I have actually read already like a good chunk of it. And it does seem cool but, oh, damn it, damn it, do I, do I keep, no, I'm not gonna keep it. I haven't picked this up in, I don't know, a long time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get rid of it. <laughs> and I, 
It's out of my sight and I'm not thinking about it anymore. The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Lavelle was something that Tor sent me as part of like a little Halloween thing. Um, <laughs> okay, okay, I was just about to say I'm not gonna keep this because I'm really not a horror person, but the dedication is for H.P. Lovecraft with all my conflicted feelings. <laughs> as somebody whose favorite poem is an H.P. Lovecraft poem, I identify with that. It's like a magic realism book. He has a curse written on his skin and he accidentally delivers an occult tomb to a reclusive sorceress and magic that has been left sleeping is now awake. That does sound really cool, but I'm not a novella person. I'm not a horror person, but I do have a friend who loves horror stuff. So I'm gonna pass this on to her. And to prove that I'm fully a hypocrite, the next book we're gonna talk about is Leech by Huron Ennis. This is a horror book from the perspective of the parasite that has taken over its host. And that sounds real fucked up. Ooh, I don't even know if I wanna keep this because just from the blurb, it has medical horror in it. And I really hate that. Okay, I will give it to this author that their writing is great because it's very unsettling the way that they describe people. I, like, I'm only like 10 pages in and already I'm like, ew. But I thought maybe I could like make an exception, but that is just too many things all put together that squick me out, so sorry. I got an advanced copy of The Stranded by Sarah Daniels, which I guess is out now because it comes out January 2023. And here we are in 2023 somehow. This is a dystopian that takes place on a cruise ship, but I am just like not jamming with that. I, I'm kind of over dystopians. I feel like dystopians should have stayed in 2012. Girl, okay, I know I'm 27 and I know more about the world than your target audience, which is probably like 14. I'm pretty sure 14 year olds know what a cruise ship is. You do not need to describe this to the depth and degree that you are, my God. Yeah, I fucking know what bread is. What? <laughs> what is happening right now? Okay, so after reading 22 pages of this, I will give it to her that this does actually seem like a good like action story. It's a good standard YA writing and we get dual points of view, but I'm just really over the whole dystopian thing. So if you like want a dystopian, maybe pick this up now, but I'm not going to. All right, y'all, I think it's time for a coffee break. So let's go get recaffeinated. <laughs> Snack break. Also not sponsored, but uh, I am lactose intolerant. So hey Silk, if you ever want to partner up, my business email is in the description box. Okay, and uh, we're back. Next up on the chopping block is a book that I was fully ready to get fucked up by. Cause when I first heard about this, cannibal nuns in space, but also fantasy monsters. I was like, absolutely. I What I need to have that in my life. But then I started reading Star Eater by Kirsten Hall and I was like, something about this is um, weird. And I know what I just said. And even considering all that, it was still weird. We do have a lovely dramatis personae. However, I feel like the ability of mine to memorize this many people and where they are in relation to city command, um, I haven't done that since my last archaeology class, and even then it was a struggle, so I'm just not gonna do that. I'm fully embracing the cosplay of a man not reading the instruction manual. Oh my god. Oh my god, what? I'm 20 pages into this novel. I have no idea what's going on. I'm having a horrible time and I'm absolutely keeping this. I'm gonna use my Holly Black Book of Night metal bookmark. Feel like this, the vibes are there. I have no idea what the fuck that I just read. <laughs> so this big boy is a point of contention for me for a couple of reasons. Number one, I received it from an ex-partner. So there's already a bit of a weird mental connection there. And then secondly, the last person that I was casually dating who recently dumped me, um, also is like, oh my gosh, you have to read that. And now I'm like, screw you romance. That's the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> Look, I know a lot of you are Douglas Adams fans and 
because I talk about constantly loving space opera by Catherine M. Valente, people are like, you're gonna love Hitchhiker's Guide. Ah, uh, okay, literally two sentences in, I understand why people who like space opera will like this. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, space opera. Far out in the uncharted backwaters of the unfashionable end of the western spiral arm of the galaxy lies a small, unregarded yellow sun. Orbiting this at a distance of roughly 92 million miles is an utterly insignificant little blue-green planet whose ape-descended life forms are so amazingly primitive that they still think digital watches are a pretty neat idea. Once upon a time, in a small, watery, excitable planet called Earth, in a small, watery, excitable country called Italy, a soft-spoken, rather nice gentleman by the name of Enrico Fermi was born into a family so overprotective that he felt compelled to invent the atomic bomb. Like, tell me that is not the exact same voice. I get it now. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide, regardless of how many ex-partners of mine are tied to it. My next trio of books that I'm gonna try and speed run. These are all books I got sent by Book of the Month uh, when I was working with them. So first of all, we have The Inheritance of Orpidea Divina, which is by uh, Zoraida Cordova. Then we have The Cartographers by Peng Shepard, which at first I heard amazing things about, and then more recently I've heard kind of meh things about. And then also A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross, which also I've heard just more recently it was like radio silence and then suddenly like 17 of my good book talk friends were like this is amazing and i'm like all right well now i gotta check this out so we're gonna start off with uh family curses turning people into trees <laughs> on page five there's a dinosaur joke this is this is endearing me to this book for sure this writing is really nice it's actually very similar to uh, like Hitchhiker's Guide or Space Opera, but more fantasy instead of sci-fi. I love that type of writing. That's like super snappy and clever and like really extended metaphors, really like weird twists on things. Then there was a kind of bad luck that Orchidia had. Bad luck woven into the birthmarks that dotted her shoulders and chest like constellations. Bad luck that felt like the petty vengeance of a long forgotten god. Her mother, Isabella Montoya, had blamed her sin first and the star second. The latter was true in more ways than one. Done. I'm keeping this book. <laughs> that floats my boat for sure. Okay, now we're going to try The Cartographers by Peng Shepherd. I remember why I wanted this book. And one of the main characters, her father is murdered and it looks like it's over some seemingly worthless map, but then it turns out that map is incredibly valuable and rare and it might be the only one in existence to a place that hasn't been discovered yet. Okay, so I am two chapters in. I'm not loving it. I'm not hating it. I'm gonna do something wild and spicy and dangerous as I'm gonna flip to a random page in the middle and I'm gonna read a chapter and we're gonna see if this intrigues me enough to keep it. I think I'm going to pass this on. This is just not my style of writing. Although I do really like Pink Shepherd's Book of M. It was so beautiful. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna pass on this. But now we have Irish folklore in A River Enchanted. I love some Celtic folklore, if you couldn't tell. Oh my god. <laughs> Ooh! Oh my god! Okay, that's cool. I like that a lot. That's really cool. Okay, this is why I was just freaking out. So... They're in a boat, and all of a sudden he hears tap. The fisherman ceased rowing, his eyes wide as full moons. Did you hear that? He lifted his hand. Be quiet, he wanted to say. Tap, tap, tap. He felt it in the soles of his shoes. Something was in the water, clicking its long nails on the underside of the hull. Oh! The mainlander's scorn had caused this. He had offended the folk of the water, who must have gathered in the foam of the sea to hear Jack's legend. Everyone knows I love fairy folklore, and I love the way that she writes, because it feels like a story within a story and like little pieces of lore just like tucked into places. I'm gonna use my Munro's books with a big old eagle on it. Next two books are a pair. So we're getting a two for one special. If I end up liking The Wolf Den, I will keep House with the Golden Door, uh, which are both by Elodie Harper. It is also starting to get dark outside. So um, yeah, I've been at this for a while, but uh, this is the price I have to pay for just leaving things on my shelf for like an entire year. So I've gone much further in this book than I have in the other ones. I'm on page 43 
and I like it, but I don't think I'm going to keep it because the writing is very beautiful. It's very literary. And I am all about reading a book about ancient Roman sex workers. I think that's great. But, um, just, you know, because of that, there are themes in here that I don't, I don't really love. Uh, so even though this is like a very beautifully written book and I'm sure the sequel is also going to be great, I'm going to pass these on. Speaking of Greek and Roman, we have Queen Themyscira, which is about Amazonian queens. Then we have Set Fire to the Gods, which is uh, like Avatar, the last airbender, but with Roman inspired gladiator fights. Amazing. And then Daughter of Sparta, which is a retelling of the myth of Daphne and Apollo. So let's start with, uh, let's start with Amazon Queens. Oh, a woman with a sword. Oh my God. It's already been like three hours and um, I really hope that this is even a little bit entertaining of a video. Content. This also has great writing. This is very literary, but still very powerful. It's not as mythical as I was expecting. I think this is more just like straight up like historical fiction. I was hoping for like a little bit more godly shenanigans. Oh, wait a minute. Heracles just arrived. Okay. Queen Hippolyta, she can call me anytime. Yeah, we're keeping this one. Oh, what bookmark? Oh, I know what bookmark. I have this one. It is I'll Bow to No King. And this comes from a book that I was recently sent, which is uh, Queen and Conqueror by Isabel Omo. I'm like a, like halfway through it right now, which is why it's not in this pile. Um, but I think that, that that works nicely with this book. This one I keep going back to all the time and yet somehow I've never ended up reading it. Who knows why? Again, like magical gladiator battles, sounds incredible. And there's a map in it. Oh my God. This man's thighs are being described in way too much detail for a teen book. <laughs> I'm officially 20 pages in and I'm not sold on this. I was sold on the concept and the writing is not bad, but I'm just not super into it. So we're gonna break the rules again and I'm gonna do to here. Let's just read a little bit. Oh, well, we're already talking with a fire deity, so love that. Oh, not even just a fire deity, but the fire deity. Okay, sorry for spoilers, but this has been out for two years, so I'm not responsible. It's been 84 years. I am so greasy and yeah, it's like fully dark outside now. I am so tired, but we have five more before. <laughs> Could wrap this up and make food. So, last of the Greco-Roman retellings is Daughter of Sparta by Claire Ann Andrews. Oh, is that a map? Otherwise known as the key to my heart. Oh my God, the drama of teenagers. <laughs> this is very entertaining. We're in an interesting place in history and mythology. We are in the spot just before the Trojan Wars kicks off. Helen and Menelaus are still married, so that's a big old red flag that some shit is about to go down. I do not dislike this. I think that I am going to keep it. It has potential. I do love a book with potential. Although I think this book just cut me. This is my war wound. I'm going to pick my dragon bookmark. This is by a Welsh artist. The only sequel that I'm not sure if I'm going to keep uh, is Second Rebel by Lyndon A. Lewis, which is the sequel to First Sister. And now that I'm saying that out loud, why in the world is this in my maybe pile? I loved First Sister. It was so unique and had all of this commentary on gender and the military and colonization and the rights to your own body in space. I'm gonna have to reread the last couple of chapters of First Sister, or maybe I'll just cheat and go on one of the book summary websites so I can remember who in the world is who. Thirdly and second lastly are two witchy books, and usually those would be like automatically on the big bookshelf, getting read, zoom zoom, Lightning McQueen coming through, like ka -chow, I will be getting to those right away. But for some reason, neither of these ones has, has made it into that brain space yet. So we have The Lighthouse Witches by C.J. Cook. And then we also have The Lost Coast by Amy Rose Capetta. Queer witches solving mysteries on the West Coast with the fog and the trees. 
<laughs> that just sounds like one of my weekends. The Greys have mastered the art of looking at each other. Everything they do is heavy with meaning, like they're slipping stones into each other's pockets to keep their bodies from floating away in a riptide. Oh, intriguing. It was then when she got up in the morning and found her sister with two dark but misty pieces of sea glass where her eyes used to be that things got interesting. Oh my God, that threw me off in a very different way. <laughs> oh, we got a side shave, gay. Perfect, I found one. It's my magnetic bookmark. That is a rainbow French press. Perfect because it's gay and uh, co is coffee culture big in California? It is in Vancouver at least. The vibe I feel from this is definitely West Coast, but I think it's like West Coast in the misty spring. So I'm definitely gonna keep it, but I'm also going to keep it in mind for like April. The other witch book is an adult historical fiction, maybe light fantasy magic realism. Ah, oh, okay, that's a, uh, wow. That is a very intense prologue. Um, <laughs> I was not emotionally prepared for that. Okay. Oh, but what lovely writing. Listen to this. Crashed for over a hundred years by disconsolate squalls, it needled upwards, spying straight, a white bolt locking earth, sky, and ocean together. It was lovely in its decrepitude, feathery paint gnawed off by north winds and rust blazed window frames, signatures of use and purpose. Not what I usually would read. I'm not a big historical person. And this also is a more adult book. Like our main character like, has children and I'm assuming is in her like 40s. I don't think it's the right book for me right now at this moment, but I will be keeping it. Um, yes, I am confident in that decision. I'm going to pick my Inkwell Threads bookmark for this one. Just pop that in there. A little splash of color. Very nice. And lastly, of my pile, my Extreme Elimination Round Showdown TBR Ranking Challenge is a book that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna keep, but just in case, we're going to include it anyway. That is Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Iremide. Last year, Book Talk lost its collective mind over this book, and I bought it because I was influenced, but I realized this about myself is like, I don't read contemporaries, I don't usually read YA contemporaries and I don't like thriller novels, but I still bought it. Uh, and it's just been sitting collecting dust on my shelf. Oh my God, what is this? A course schedule for high school? Having like war flashbacks, good Lord. <laughs> 20 minutes of my life is about to be wasted on an assembly that could have been an email. Girl, you don't even know. Once you're an adult and you have a corporate job, basically like nine out of 10 meetings could have just been an email. I always mess up the word perfect and prefect. Like I know that those are two different things, but in my brain, they're just one word. So it's taken eight pages of me reading perfect counsel to realize that it should be prefect counsel. Not an Incredibles reference. Oh God bless. Oh my God, is this character gay? I would have read this so much sooner if I had known that. You know what? I'm not a big thriller person, but maybe, just maybe, I can make an exception this time. What bookmark do I put in this? Ah, this one. Okay, so the, oh, hello. This is a bookmark for My Dearest Darkest by Kayla Cottingham, which is a like supernatural, scary, horror boarding school book. However, it has some plaid on it. Uh, so that's school uniform appropriate. Also the tagline of fingernails grow back, a scholarship doesn't. I think fits the thriller mystery vibe of this book. Do you want to see what a complete and utter mess I have made of my home? Okay, that's my keep pile and all my bookmarks. All right, so I'm getting rid of two, four, six, eight books off of my TBR. That feels good. You know what? Let's do another culling. I'm gonna do another reaping. I'm going to get rid of Set Fire to the Gods. I feel no regret. Am I just gonna get rid of all of my Greek, Greco-Roman books? I just might, cause I'm like these two, I'm kinda like, I don't know, I'm like on the edge about them. These are going on like extra probation. I'm gonna read another like 10 to 20 pages of these two. And if I don't like them, they gotta go. Also Relic and Ruin, 
as fun as this is, um, I'm not sure if this will be like a permanent keep. <sighs> I'm going into 2023 cleansing myself of negative energy. Thank you all for coming on this journey with me. Happy 2023. I hope that all of you have some new reading goals for this year and that you, maybe this in video inspires you to also just get rid of the stuff that you've been hoarding. Like I can preach all day long about like getting rid of stuff and like not accepting new things in. Do I currently have three books on hold that I'm gonna go pick up tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> I am trying to be more conscious of my book consumerism. Um, and also, you know, like rebalancing my time because now I've kind of come up with a couple of new hobbies in the last little while. And I have a new job, which is also taking up more and less time of my life than I was expecting. But what matters is that I am still enjoying stories and I have to remind myself that there are plenty of stories out there. Please leave down below if you have any bookish goals or resolutions for this year. My goal is to start using Storygraph. So I will leave my account down below. You can follow people on Storygraph, right? It's like the same thing as Goodreads-ish, but if you haven't followed me on Goodreads, you can also do that there. I'm gonna be using both platforms this year and see if I want to fully switch over. I'm going to go and make actual food and then organize the chaos of pages that is my couch and my floor and my coffee table. It's a tough job, but somebody's gotta read it. You know where I clicked like the video, you know where I clicked to subscribe. I hope you guys are all having a nice day wherever you are and I will see you all next week. Bye.